Here's a riddle. How do you build native cross-platform mobile applications quickly without having to rewrite code and hire consultants at a huge cost? Titanium from Appcelerator. Called the easy button for mobile application development, it allows you to focus more on what's important, getting product out the door. Join the more than 1.5 million active developers who have created over 13,000 apps at www.accelerator.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Untether.tv, where we have casual conversations with mobile rock stars. I, I'm going to paint a picture for you um, about uh, our, our guest today. And uh, so I'm a Canadian, and uh, one of the greatest games that has ever come out of Canada is something called Trivial Pursuit. It <laughs> is the game that, Can that can aside from hockey, that Canada is very proud of. It's a, an 80s game for those that weren't born in the 80s. Uh, but it's a trivia game. And trivia games uh, have lent themselves very well to board games. And then um, one of my favorite uh, bubble companies in the in the 90s was You Don't Know Jack. This was one of those games <laughs> that was so good. Uh, I mean, you remember that, Rodney, don't sure. you? Sure, of course. Yeah. You Don't Know Jack. And, and, uh, and, you know, I spent many a Sunday morning um, over a pint at a, at a bar uh, playing trivia games around the bar with my friends. And, and uh, so there's been somewhat of a gap since those days. I, I don't know if it's because I had kids and I don't go to bars on Sunday mornings anymore. Um, <laughs> but along comes Crank, uh, which is a location-aware uh, trivia game, or it can just be a trivia game that you play once a day, and we'll get uh, Rodney to describe it. But this is a, uh, a, a time, uh, you know, mobile is certainly the place uh, where trivia can come back, just like the You Don't Know Jack games on the web. It was a great distraction, and I'm really pleased to have uh, have actually Rod Rodney here, who is the co-founder of Ricochet Labs, and Ricochet Labs is the company that makes Crank. Rodney, thank you so much uh, for coming and uh, sharing the story about uh, Crank and what you're doing there. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So uh, talk to us, talk to me first about about Crank. Why don't you, you describe it a little bit better, but uh, you know, I, I've been playing mm -hmm. it for uh, for a while now, and and uh, you know, I, I think I last ranked 18th today, so I'm not I'm not great, but I'm getting 18th, better. Is that 18th in Canada or in your city? Or? I think it's in my city, which oh, okay. uh, I, I think there are <laughs> only 18 people playing it in my city, so uh, <laughs> it's a, I'll work you're, on it. You're in the top 20. That's good. I'm in the top 20. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thanks. Uh, well, crank. What we've done with crank is tried to make uh, the consumption of content a game. Uh, and so it's a it's a location aware mobile and now we have a web version and Facebook uh, social trivia game. Uh, and so what we do is try to get people make it a daily ritual where people are, are coming together in small bits of time. Which you know I feel strongly that increasingly people are going to want to interact with information in these little pockets of time that they have uh, around their day. Uh, and so. Uh, crank we feel is a really fun strong way to do that and it, I definitely see it's totally uh, uh, an evolution of, of Trivial Pursuit and You Don't Know Jack and Wait Wait Don't Tell Me if you've ever heard that show uh, you know we feel like we're taking kind of the best of a lot of those things in tone and content and attitude uh, and then applying a lot of these emerging technologies of, of uh, that GPS provides that social gaming uh, offer to make it this very compelling social experience that you can uh, in, indulge whenever you like just uh, by pulling the, the phone out of your pocket. So uh, I got a question though. Why, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, if I don't set up a game in my house, and we'll get into this, or mm -hmm. uh, around me and invite people in, mm -hmm. why, why a game a day? Right. <laughs> Good question. Uh, so we, we started, the, we launched uh, about a year ago during South by Southwest of uh, 2009. And we wanted to make it, uh, I should say, half our guys come from a, a Nintendo background, worked yeah. for um, a Nintendo DS and, and, uh, and some platform or, or, pardon me, console games. And so our, our notion was kind of come to location-based mobile from a kind of a Nintendo point of view, meaning make it really mass market, really easy to pick up, uh, try to bring those high level of polish and, and you know, easy uh, 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 gameplay to it. Uh, and so one way around that, or one approach to that, we thought was to make it kind of, try to make it this very uh, uh, precious, almost limited resource where you get a little bit every day. So it's kind of almost like a tease. You get yeah. a little bit every day. Uh, okay. Another reason was that we wanted it to be this ritual where hopefully people would kind of make it a, a thing they do, you know, when they're waiting for the bus, when they're drinking their coffee, when they're 
taking a coffee break or uh, you know dodging the the boss, whatever they're doing, it becomes this little part of their day. Uh, and and so we thought that by making it fresh every day, uh, by keeping that would keep people from getting burned out on it because we're we're gamers at heart and you know certainly have, have bought games that we loved and would blaze through it for you know hours or days at a time and then either you exhaust the content or you exhaust yourself you right. get burned out on it so our idea was that we could we could meet it out in these very fresh really crisp concise packages uh, that also one other reason was that it we wanted to really reflect the news of the day. That it would, you know, a half or so of our content each day is literally ripped straight from the headlines. So it's stuff that's still in the news, still in the newspaper, still on TV, on the radio. Uh, and it's by keeping it this one once a day event, uh, you know, we, we keep that stuff really fresh and really current. In fact, increasingly, it's funny, we see a lot of people in, in tweets and other places uh, cite us as a reference. You know, and say, oh, you know, I just saw this on CNN. I learned that two days ago on Crank. Or, oh, you didn't hear about that? That was on Crank yesterday. You know, which uh, we're, we're flattered and we're a little worried that if, if people think we're a reference. But, you know, it's in the big picture, it's a great thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's quickly talk about, you know, why, how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, not, mm-hmm. not so much game development, but why, why Crank? Why Trivia? Mm-hmm. Why mobile? Let's start. What was the what was the big idea that you guys were going after here? It's pretty competitive space to begin yeah. with, and yeah. it's fairly easy to move into trivia on a mobile device. But the way you guys do it is so unique. But why mm-hmm. did you guys decide this? Right. coming from your background. Well, a good question. So, coming from you know, half my guys come from a traditional video game background, half from more of an enterprise software background. <laughs> uh, so it was a good, uh, so you know, left brain, right game. brain, right there. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And, and, the, and the enterprise guys focus more on our back end server side, and the game guys focus more on the front end user experience side. Uh, but to get really get your question, uh, our motivation wasn't necessarily to, to make a great trivia game. Uh, as I mentioned, we wanted to bring kind of these Nintendo attitudes to, to location based mobile. Because uh, we saw a lot of uh, kind of the geek in us got very excited by things like Foursquare and Gowalla uh, and a lot of their early uh, uh, location uh, apps. Yeah. Uh, however, you know, kind of more of the, the mass market side, the Nintendo side in us said, well, you know, that's not going to, my grandmother's not going to play that or my kid's not going to play that. Or, you know, we didn't see it as becoming a really mass market thing. So we thought we could bring that kind of mass market taste to it. Uh, and trivia actually kind of fit in a lot of those ways. You know, trivia is very tried and true. Uh, it actually uh, it helped us really demonstrate what we thought were a lot of the innovations on the, on the technical side, uh, namely dynamic content, that mm-hmm. it's fresh every time you play the game, uh, that it's location-based, so that I'm seeing how I'm playing against people in my neighborhood or my city, uh, and we're expanding that side of it all the time. Uh, and that it's actually, we didn't quite anticipate this side, but we've learned that it's actually quite flexible. Uh, in that, you know, we use it as kind of an entertainment property, right, to make fun trivia games. Yeah. But we have people who are using the platform for educational purposes, uh, for marketing. Uh, there's a <clears throat> a group funded by the De- U.S. Department of Health and Human Services that's using it uh, to help try to teach kids to stay off drugs. Uh, which I, I I think maybe the irony of a game called Crank helping <laughs> stay off drugs is, yes. is is a little lost on them, but. Uh, you know, it, it's they actually have been quite happy with it because they say that the control group uh, that uh, you know they learn the traditional way through these lectures and worksheets and what have you are, are not uh, the retention is much lower than the groups who are using Crank right. and and learning the same material but through a, a social game competitive atmosphere. Uh, so uh, that was another side of you know we felt that trivia had had a, a lot of legs, a lot of uh, uh, ability. Uh, and it's you know international as long as you can translate the cultural and the language issues it's it's very international uh, as well and we see you know crank as, as as one application within a suite of applications that we we plan to develop but we thought it was a really good launching point to demonstrate a lot of our, our core technical capabilities and and user experience objectives. So you uh, you launched uh, last year at South by Southwest. That's right. So mm-hmm. 2000 and 2010 South by Southwest. So you're coming up on a year old uh, for, for from your launch. T- talk about that experience for a second because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes uh, getting that first customer or or getting those first few customers uh, is mm-hmm. so um, hard for a lot of a lot of companies. I've spoken with a lot of companies who are uh, in the mobile space that still haven't 
put out there for you know receive their first customer or their first payment and that's a big right. sign so mm-hmm. uh, how did you guys find that first customer or that first right. grouping sure well a few ways we've been very much a capital efficient or uh, cheap however you want to phrase it uh, you know yeah. scrappy startup Boots, bootstrapping and startup bootstrapping right? exactly yeah. so when we started uh, when we launched during South by uh, we, we did a little guerrilla marketing that got us some, a little bit of a splash. And so we, we didn't have much money. Uh, we spent a few hundred dollars to sponsor, co-sponsor a, a party with a group called Dorkbot that had a bunch of robots out there that were setting fire to things and uh, kind of dangerous uh, survival research lab type stuff. You ever seen. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so that was a good atmosphere for us. Dorkbot. But, uh, Dorkbot. They're great. They're an international group. Uh, in fact, we're co-sponsoring their party again this year, and it's much bigger and better this year. Uh, but uh, aside from that, we, we did a little guerrilla marketing that we, we didn't have much money, so we kind of called in some favors and friends of friends, and we, we, uh, we launched with what we called the Crank Off, which was a we got a group of uh, fairly well-known folks to play each other in the game. Uh, and we did it for three days during South by Southwest, and we, we donated a, a prize uh, to a charity of choice of the winner. Hmm. And so we called the contest the Astronaut versus the Monkey, because on one side we had Richard Garriott, who is uh, one of our local game luminaries and is, has been in space. He's an astronaut. Uh, the Monkey uh, was played by Michael Nesmith of the band The Monkeys, yes. uh, who is, you know, some call the smart monkey of, of that group. Uh, <laughs> He's the one who can we, play the instrument. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, and Nez has actually become a great friend of the company and been very helpful to us. Great. Uh, but and it, and it turned out that the monkey uh, mopped the floor with the astronaut in the contest and, and did quite well. Uh, so that was a nice little way to get us started with a with little buzz and, and got us some attention and some blogs and a little press. How did you come uh, up with that idea? Like, was it, you know, you just wanted something that was special or unique around, around the trivia or was... Yeah. Know? That was part of it. Is like I said, we you know we we looked at our money and said, well, we have maybe five hundred bucks here. What do we do with this? Uh, and uh, so you we, first you went directly to a an ex monkey and you thought, well, who can we right. afford? Right? It's either no. cheap trick or the monkey, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. No, they fortunately all those folks did it for free. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. But uh, we through our history in game development, we knew Richard Garriott from that. So we thought, well. You know, we could call in a favor with Richard. I think he would he would be a, a good sport about yeah. this. Uh, and then I'm on the side, active with uh, on the board of a couple groups, including our, our uh, Austin Film Society, uh, which does a lot with digital media production and film production. Uh, and Film Society has worked with Nesmith on a few things. He's he's not based in Austin, but he spends a lot of time here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I had worked with him uh, loosely in that. And so uh, he's a Interesting guy, very smart, very curious, very much a gadget guy. Uh, and so I you know, asked him if he wouldn't mind helping us out with this. And he said, oh, an iPhone game? I love this. This is great. So you know, it was kind of calling in some favors. And we had some other interesting folks. We got uh, Rick Moody, the author who wrote The Ice Storm. Yep. Uh, he did it. Uh, Harvey Smith, who's a, a game designer here. Uh, so we had a few people. You know, I think we had about nine or ten. Uh, we and a lot of those are just calling in favors, or someone knew someone, or things like that. That's great. And they, you know, they were all good sports about it. Yeah. So uh, when you when you launched it, it was obviously um, it it got picked up somewhere. Something happened that allowed mm-hmm. you to generate a little bit of buzz around the product right. launch. Right. So we started getting a nice little viral spread, and to this to this day, we still get a good pickup from that. You know, we get around 1,500 new players a day. Uh, and we're not, at the moment, doing in, any active marketing. So that's just people who are finding it from their friends. We've tried to make the, the, the social uh, integration really tight, the, the, the viral loop, so that you know we encourage players to post after their scores to uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we have a really healthy uh, 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 community on our Facebook page and our Twitter stream uh, that among the players among themselves and we and the developers interact with them a lot and you know uh, and a, I think we have a nice attitude and, and you know kind of the, the style of the game carries mm-hmm. over into into that as well uh, which helps yep. and uh, you know so those things and those are all you know fairly cheap uh, things to do but they've been quite effective for us in picking up new people so it's nice I, I mean what 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 could you attribute that 1500 uh, new players mm-hmm. every day it seems that uh, I mean, do do you release your numbers? How many players do you have worldwide uh, using the game? Yeah, we're actually just coming up on three hundred thousand. So three hundred thousand uh, players in a year, like, and uh, so are, are you seeing that fifteen hundred increasing? And and what do you is that? Yeah. It can't be just attributed to the to the viral nature of the game, can it? 
Well, I think part of it is, and, uh, and not to toot our horn, because I think part of it's a shortcoming in our side that you know because we've been in, in, in this very scrappy startup mode, we haven't had the resources to focus a lot on on new marketing initiatives and and new pushes for that. We do little things here and there. Uh, we've been really lucky that uh, some of the kind of the net tastemakers have adopted it. Yeah. So folks like Ev Williams and, and Robert Scoble and uh, uh, Jason Goldman have you know, play very publicly and they taunt each other and, you know, oh, nice score, buddy. And and that helps because a lot of their followers see it and like, yeah. oh, you know. Uh, so I think, you know, we've tapped into kind of that, that zeitgeist a bit of the net, which that helps. Uh, and part of it is that people are really, it's a very sticky app. About 70% of the people who play it, we find, come back and play it again and again. Uh, and they recruit their friends. You know, I think it taps into that competitive side, you know, where it's like uh, one is among friends. And we get a lot of anecdotal funny stories about people like playing it in their office or with their family, you know, like, oh, my boss thinks he's so smart and I, <laughs> you know, every day I kick his butt or uh, it's the one time I'm ever, you know, uh, outsmart my uncle or things like that. So it definitely taps into this this, this thing about that, that that works really well. Uh, and I think the other side is that the market is it's kind of the right time for this with the market. You know, I think there's a lot of people are, are while the check-in apps and, and kind of the, the first wave of location-based apps certainly are, are, are still around. I think people, we find a lot of people are kind of looking for the next flavor of that or the next evolution. And uh, we feel like we're building on stuff like Foursquare's done and Scavenger is done. Yeah. But by trying to make it a little bit of a deeper experience and, 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 you know, we have a lot of plans for this year to expand on that so that the, what you're doing and how you're interacting with, with news and information and content is really shaped by where you are and, and who's around you when you're doing it. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, mobile is obviously, uh, you know, I can't uh, overstate the simplicity of my next statement, but it's contextual, right? So uh, mm -hmm. everything that you do is is uh, is within, you know, context to, to where you are and what you're exposed to. So, you know, I had a, a question uh, today about uh, Libya and uh, Christchurch and what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, every once in a while you throw those questions in there and it's shocking because it's, uh, you know, uh, Trivial Pursuit, as I brought up before, was uh, once that card is printed, you right? Know, we're, you know, 1980 is still 1980, and, and uh, it's mm -hmm. not going to change. And, and um, this is kind of the evolution of that game, uh, of, right. of, of that uh, trivia game. Mm -hmm. I mean, what have people really? Well, if, if you look at the growth that you've had and 1,500 new users a day, kind of escalating, um, what do you think? What are people? coming to you with saying you know it was this feature that really got me hooked or mm -hmm. do you see that you know what is it that that is driving this number now yeah that's a good question um we get a, a large number of people who, it's interesting who come to us and say i'm not a gamer but i play your game yeah. uh you know which it's funny because having been in video games for about 14 years uh i feel like culturally there's been a big shift you know where gaming has gotten more mainstream yeah. and I think that has a lot to do with the Wii and with the iPhone, uh, you know, where it's not a, a shameful thing that kids do anymore. You know, it's more mainstream. Yeah. But we do seem to tap into that uh, crowd who, you know, isn't out there actively playing games, but they see ours as different. I think because it's maybe a little more like seen as a in the vein of a crossword puzzle or a Sudoku or, you know, like a, it's a battle of wits. It, I think a lot of people get excited that it actually rewards them for for being smart or paying attention, uh, reading you know, news, reading the news. Yeah, you know, a lot of people saying like, ah, oh, finally my anthropology degree paid off because I, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's not to say it's a brainiac game. You know, we do a lot of junky pop culture and and silly stuff too. Uh, I think I think that's that's part of the reason. Uh, I don't know. There's there, it is something that's kind of hard to put your thumb on about. You know why people uh, latch on to it, uh, and we're trying to build on that uh, both with stuff we do internally, and then we're we've got new versions of the game. I, I'm happy to talk about coming out that I think will really expand on that and allow people to get deeper into content and and really connect. You know, if they're big sports people, if they're big politics people, mm -hmm. we're trying to address those those passions of of our users. Yeah, you can you can definitely see how how um, not just corporations, because I know that you've got some great big clients that are using this and. But even cities um, and uh, even nations uh, around political uh, elections, for example, you could start to mm -hmm. build trivia around, um, uh, you know, parties and their stances, and and mm -hmm. uh, and you could you could educate the population 
in a, in a completely different way through trivia. Uh, you know, right. Mm -hmm. And it, that, as you said before, you know, most studies will s suggest that sitting down and reading about something or learning about something isn't as sticky as as the trivia questions. Mm -hmm. you know, there are people that are very good at crossword puzzles, but aren't very good at anything else in life. And, right. and there are people who are very good at trivia. And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's just the, the trivial trivia mind. Maybe there's a there's obviously a link to learning in there. I think so. I mean, and that's again been a pleasant surprise to me, honestly. That you know we we came at it from an entertainment point of view, yeah. uh, because we think that's key to it. Uh, but we found you know, like I mentioned, the Stay Off Drug Group. We have uh, University of Colorado Boulder is using it for news literacy. Uh, we're talking with, uh, uh, there's a major foundation that supports how uh, digital tools shape uh, news literacy and journalism. Uh, they've been very interested in it. Uh, you know, so, and all those things, and you're totally right. I mean, to, to me, it's very heartening to see how uh, it can be a fun, enjoyable, easy to jump into event or, or, or application, but it could actually have some interesting uh, benefits, you know, that, People get more engaged with what's going on, with the news, with, with their politics, with uh, cultural events, and, and it can be very tailored because of the GPS side. You know, mm -hmm. we can we can tailor it down to a, a neighborhood if we want, or as large as the globe uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of where the content goes and how you interact with people around it. So, uh, did you? I mean, you said you started this as a casual as a casual game, um, mm -hmm. and and this just kind of it's that you know letting a, thou a thousand flowers bloom. These things found you, or like you you guys are working uh. with uh, with Buick, right? And and right. Uh -huh. did that find you, or did you go out and find them? Yeah, they're, they're actually finding us. Uh, so you know we're uh, we're in a position now where we're we're trying to keep up, honestly. So we're getting lots of inbound calls from groups like uh, creative and ad agencies, mm -hmm. from uh, media outlets, from, from brands, consumer brands, entertainment brands, uh, education groups. Uh, uh, so uh, a lot of these have reached out to us, and which is uh, to me very exciting and, 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 and uh, amazing in that we're not actively yet promoting you know, what we see as a bunch of different ways that this uh, platform can uh, apply. Mm -hmm. uh, but people seem to be playing it and kind of extrapolating on their own, saying, oh, you know, we have a, a, a music festival or a new product or uh, 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 we're charged with this new initiative and wonder if this, you know, seems like Crank could fit into that somehow. So they're, they're kind of calling us, which is wonderful because it's, uh, you know, it keeps our phone ringing, keeps us busy, uh, gives us a good story to tell. Uh, but we do, uh, we are trying to readjust so that we can be a little more proactive about it uh, and not just reactive, but, you know, go out and, and target some people we want to work with and, and really push the product in, in uh, directions that we think will be very beneficial. So uh, a year into this, you know, what's, mm -hmm. been, what's been your biggest surprise so far, uh, you know, as, you, as you've gone through this and you've, you've hit that 300,000 player? You said that 70% of those people actually are, are fairly active, so it's, it's a right. good base. But mm -hmm. um, what's been the most surprising thing that you've, that you've come mm -hmm. across in the last year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, wow, what's the most surprising? I think that um, I guess a couple things. One is that there has been a, a, a real passionate uh, core base that's formed around it, mm -hmm. which I you know I'm, I play a lot of iPhone games and I I have a few that I, I would go back to, but I I'm not uh, you know inclined to like really talk it up online mm -hmm. or or make it more of a cultural thing. Which you don't love it. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And we have a lot of players like that. You know, for example, we a few months ago we started opening up the game to user-generated content because yeah. we thought, well, that would make our jobs easier and it'd be fun for people. And let's incentivize it. We'll, we'll get, we have a lot of awards you can win in the game. So we said, oh, let's put in some. Uh, you know, you get published award if you we do use one of your questions. Here's one for ten, and one uh, what the heck, one for fifty. If we publish fifty of your questions, you know, we thought no one's ever going to do that. Well, within about a month or two, we had three or four people racing to get fifty questions published, wow. uh, and suddenly we had to say, oh no, we should go to a hundred and a five hundred, just to keep these people satisfied. Uh, and so that's been that's been surprising, you know, that 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 kind of stuff happens. I think the other pleasant surprise we've had is is how it's kind of popped its head up in these really unexpected kind of walks of life or, or, or ways where, uh, for example, one of the guys, uh, in, we're in an office with four, uh, four other companies, mm -hmm. and the guy in the company below us came to us a couple weeks ago and said he went to a wedding in uh, New Mexico, 
And at the reception, someone brought up, like, hey, you guys ever see this? They called it Q-Rank, this Q-Rank thing. Uh, and a lot of people at the wedding were like, oh, yeah, we play all the time. You know, I, I love it. And, and our, this guy downstairs said, well, I told him, like, you know, it's actually pronounced Crank. <laughs> uh, and they went, no, no, it's called Q-Rank. And he said, well, actually, you know, I work – on the floor below the guys in Macon, they went, what? No way, you know, you're great. You know, as if, like, he said, oh, I worked, you know, next to uh, David Bowie or, you know, something like it is. He said he had this great reaction where he felt like a, you know, he, he knew he was a celebrity. Uh, and so that's flattering, but it's just funny that, you know, I, I certainly will share apps with friends and go tell people, hey, here's a fun one or check this out, yeah. but I haven't been in a lot of these situations where I feel like people are passionate about it and discussing it and sharing it that way. Uh, so that, that's been a nice surprise. Uh, well, I want to talk about this one great little feature that I think is obviously one of the one of the greatest viral pieces of this, which is is setting up a game. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so typically you could go into a bar and or a restaurant, and and I was in one this past Sunday where they had the trivia on the screens, and mm-hmm. um, it, it just it just seemed after seeing Crank, it just seemed so archaic and old, and and uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, so this feature that you have that allows me to host a game and then invite all my friends in to play that game in proximity to me. So basically you're having a, a, you know, one of those equivalents, but wherever you stand, that, that, that to me seems like the one viral piece that even at a wedding, you know, there's going to, there's bound to be, you know, 60% of the people or 70% of the people in there that uh, carry cell phones or carry smartphones or iPhone based and, and, uh, or iOS based and, and it just kind of spreads that way. Wouldn't you mm-hmm. find that instead of playing, um, you know, traditional games like, uh, you know, Trivial Pursuit, you're pulling up Crank? Right. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. <laughs> and we, we do see a fair amount of that. Uh, we added that feature a few months ago, hoping that would be, a, you know, that people are already congregate it and they would open it up like what that. happened as a re- when you when you launched mm-hmm. it so the game didn't come with that feature no we added that uh probably four or five months ago we had that why yeah. was it was it with that uh, kind of attitude that you thought that it is going to create a, another viral piece for this game yeah yeah for sure and we, we looked at uh the, some of the systems are out there like you're talking about like the bar trivia yeah where it seemed you know that stuff hasn't changed the best i can tell in 20 or 30 years no nope. And it uses a clunky box and an RF frequency and all that. So we thought there's some opportunity there. Uh, two, one thing, and this is still we're still kind of in development on this, but we we're, uh, we really want to expand that side of it, where uh, not only could you play against just your buddies when you're you know at the bar or at the wedding, what have you, uh, but we're adding a, a new piece where it can be synchronized with a a, a live event. So say a, a live sports game, uh, you know, the Oscars, a uh, TV show, so that you might be there with your buddies watching or you might just be at home, but you're having a social experience playing a game that's synchronized with, you know, say, uh, you know, something happens in the football game and you get a question about it 30 seconds later or you're anticipating, you know, what uh, is, who's going to win the best uh, picture winner, you know, yeah. like things like that to have... Because we know that you know, forty plus percent of people, uh, you have a smartphone or a laptop with them when they're watching TV now. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there to really expand that side of the company and, and do things like that. Yeah, it just seems like it. So when you when you launched this feature, did did you see that uptake that you that mm-hmm. you had anticipated or that you'd hope? Somewhat. Um, it, it has. It did pick up, and we do a lot of passionate users around that. It hasn't uh, uh, really leaped uh, ahead like I, I was hoping, yeah. and I think part of that is. Um, uh, and I've tried to spend some time trying to figure that part out. I think part of it is that while you know we're, we've certainly done pretty well for a scrappy startup uh, in terms of user numbers, we haven't reached that I think which is kind of a you know a, a tipping point or a saturation point where you could walk in a bar and you know five or ten people at least are going to have the app installed yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, so that's part of it. Uh, we're in the process now of raising some more money so that for one reason so that we could do things like that to really try to focus a little more on that side of the company and 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 build up uh, more of the location based games like that right uh, i mean it seems like a natural play um, obviously um you, you said that uh let, let's shift gears a little bit here and mm-hmm. talk about um two things you just said that you're about to raise some more money so let's let's talk mm-hmm. about that process um you know there's a lot of money floating around for mobile these days it's great uh you mm-hmm. know i've seen some wonderful uh, funding some outrageous funding and and sure. some some moderate funding that is more appropriate I think for software in the mobile space. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I would exactly do with twenty million dollars, uh, uh, you know, in in for mobile software, but I'd like right. to try. So <laughs> you did raise money uh, when you launched um, 
Or, Around that time, yeah. yeah. So our, our backstory is uh, Michael, my co-founder, and I, we bootstrapped it initially for the first few months uh, to get to essentially a prototype phase and, and on our way to launching. Uh, and then we raised some angel money. Uh, some Austin area entrepreneurs kicked in a little bit of money yeah. uh, to help us add a couple more heads, help us uh, try to grow it a little faster. Uh, and that's carried us a, a good ways. And so now uh, we started generating some revenue from some of these media customers we're working with and the Buicks and the brands. Uh, but we've also uh, gone back to the angel community uh, trying to raise a little more angel money. Uh, we've we thought about going out for Series A in the fall, and we decided we we're, you know, maybe wait a little longer. And part of the reason was we were starting to get really nice traction with these brands and publications. So we thought, well, you know, it'll let's build some more value in the company. Get you know some of these customers in our pocket. Get some nice revenue numbers, nice user numbers, and then go back out to the you know the institutional money. Uh, we've had really good fortune with uh, this group called Angel List. Uh, Venture Hacks runs its an online angel network. Uh, we went out to that group about a month ago, and, and they've uh, introduced us to a lot of really good people. Uh, we've added some new uh, advisors to the company who've been uh, really helpful, like Jason Goldman, who was uh, formerly of Twitter. Uh, he just left recently, and he's he's been really helpful with some of the fundraising and strategic side that we're working on. Yeah. So when you when you started this, uh, you, when you started going after funding, do you mind if I ask how much you raised in that first round, or have you disclosed that ever? Or is it? Uh, I don't think we've disclosed it. It was not a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was. You're still bootstrapping uh, after that first round. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, it was certainly. You know, we were have and today, you know, we're still pretty lean. We've been stretched every dollar very, very yeah. far. Yeah. Well, that's that's good. I, I mean, I think that the lessons that you learned in that aspect, from a company's perspective, of mm -hmm. not spending a lot of money and being forced to be creative, really does make you shift your focus from just spending to create awareness to actually creating value in order to be able to dovetail that into awareness. So, right, you know, great right. lessons learned. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. But when you went out to raise that money, did you guys mm -hmm. have a lot of experience and a lot of contacts, or was it really just from angel list and from from wandering around the neighborhood? Yeah, so that's interesting. Well, I had started a previous company, uh, which I bootstrapped and then I sold within a year or two. Uh, and I stayed with that acquiring company for seven years. What was the name of the company so, that you started? Uh, called Fizz Factor, okay, F-I-Z-Z -Z yeah. Factor. Yeah. And we did licensed product video games, so like uh, Hulk and Spider-Man, things like that. Console games, uh, not uh, games? Console and handheld. Okay. And and we did PC in the early days, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had some. I had, certainly had a lot of operation experience. I had entrepreneurial experience, but I I never raised uh, money like that. Yeah. So that was definitely some new muscles for me to to build. Uh, the other side that's been very educational uh, is that coming from a game background, there's uh, you know at least in Austin, and I think it's probably fairly pervasive. Is you know the game. Uh, technology world and the more traditional technology world, be it you know chip manufacturing or software or app apps, have been fairly divided in terms of uh, funding res uh, uh, resources. Yeah. Uh, business models are typically pretty different. Uh, I think they're they're increasingly blurring, uh, you know, because of things like the the iPhone and App Store, and you know, is Goala a game or is it an app? You know, those things kind of help. Yep. But uh, I certainly the, the last year has been really helpful and and, and uh, uh, you know interesting challenge for me is to get extract myself somewhat from that game world which I was pretty deeply rooted in and and meet more of the people who are investing in uh, software or investing in apps uh, who are you know I find are very curious about the game world but you know always seemed a little odd and a little weird to them they didn't quite get it uh, so that's that side's been good uh, so when we went out to, um, I kind of danced around your question uh, we knew one investor in town really well who was a serial entrepreneur and did angel investing mm -hmm. and he was really instrumental in one encouraging us and in two uh, writing that first check uh, and he wrote a nice check uh, you know again not anything like we uh, were easy sailing on but it put a little gas in the tank mm -hmm. and more importantly then it gave you know kind of some of the social proof that was helpful for us then to go out to another angel or two and say hey look uh, you know your buddy put in and, and you, you trust him so that certainly kind of started the 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 wheel rolling at that point yeah and and that's great that you know i i think the angel community is is uh, obviously you know high risk high net worth individuals who are taking high risks in a company obviously mm -hmm. and an idea and the entrepreneur and the ability that they think that they can you can execute on this but the big key is is really that they're that they're willing to go in solo 
Um, mm-hmm. And it's not contingent on you finding that second person, which is what I'm finding a lot in Canada is, is uh, the angels are, are in, but they're in if you find that other guy. Oh, uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. So th- there's a big difference in the, I uh, say this often, the education of the angel communities in Canada versus the United States is, you know, in the United States, you're you're entering college, you know, uh, in Canada, we're entering kindergarten when it comes to angels. <laughs> there, there isn't a scale of, of uh, wealth. Mm-hmm. You know, you know uh, the same. Um, mm-hmm. There's, there isn't a proportionate of wealthy people as there are in the states. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. But yeah, there, there are some wealthy people here, but uh, mm-hmm. not, not guys that you see. Um, a, a lot of Canadians will go down and start companies in the states because uh, the networks are, are far greater and deeper and richer when it comes to the angel community. Mm-hmm. So stay there. Yeah. Don't come up to Canada. I always say okay. <laughs> I've, I've often been told that I, I. I am Canadian in that uh, my behavior and interests. So, uh, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. Well, it, it is interesting. Like, I've even found now that uh, this round we're we're still talking to Austin Angels, but we've really expanded to the California groups and 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 the East Coast groups, and they do seem to have you know different risk tolerances, different yep. uh, areas of focus. You know, this little location base like we're in. Uh, typically, the Silicon Valley guys are a little more aggressive, and yeah. on top of that. Uh, you know, we're also working a lot with media companies, uh, and so a lot of the East Coast guys, you know, not a surprise there, but you know, seem to have really interesting connections there and a lot of strategic value, you know, that could help us knock down uh, doors and you know, in, in New York and and in the publishing world. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, it's very polarizing, and what I love about, I mean, uh, what I see in Austin, I mean, there's hubs definitely what we're, you know, across the United States when it comes to mobile, and and you've hit mm-hmm. on all of them, obviously, Silicon Valley. Uh, I think it's being challenged by New York and, and hubs like Austin. Uh, mm-hmm. Certainly, uh, it doesn't hurt that South by Southwest uh, happens there because it, it's become the hub of activity for, for the mobile space and the new media space and, and media right. in general. And it's mm-hmm. something that Silicon Valley doesn't have. It's something that New York City doesn't have. Um, and uh, I, I think that you know, you'd be hard pressed to make a decision between those three places uh, as to mm-hmm. where you'd want to start a company these days. Which you know, five years ago, it, it, it was a well, maybe ten years ago, it was a no-brainer on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. It doesn't surprise me. Yes. So, so talk about. Um, so you you got a little bit of investment in uh, from from some angels, and mm-hmm. uh, did that fuel uh, revenue growth? Like, how are you guys going to generate some mm-hmm. some revenue in this? The game's yeah. free for the consumer, for me. Right, right. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Which we'll probably continue that way. We we have played with the idea of having a you know a paid version and a free version, mm-hmm. to, like a subscription uh, version kind of thing. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is something we're looking at. So where we are now with it is. Um, we're just on the eve, literally maybe tonight, uh, but very soon, of uh, submitting our, our major update, which will uh, add what we call content channels to Crank. And so what this will be is you'll still have the, the Crank daily game, the one you've been playing, yeah. uh, but we're partnering with groups, uh, media groups and brands and, and festivals and different things uh, so that when you open it up, it'll be almost like a, a little micro app store where you'll see a bunch of different things. You say, oh, you know, give me a sports or give me a music or give me, and they'll be branded with, you know, uh, publications or, or groups that, you know, are affiliated with that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so that that's our, our big thing now. And, and we're playing with different models with that of maybe they're subscription-based. Uh, uh, these groups, for, for us, uh, we're doing a license model for them, so they're licensing our technology uh, in order to, to have a place in there. Mm-hmm. And and they seem to really be responding well to that. You know, these are groups like, uh, you know, major media outlets down to local ones, mm-hmm. uh, brands like Buick or, or uh, uh, consumer brands like that. Uh, and the reason being is I think kind of the common denominator between, uh, say, a Buick and a newspaper is that they're all trying to engage people around their content. You know, they want to make that uh, consumption of that kind of fun and social, right. uh, and they might be generating the content directly, be it a you know a blog or a movie uh, studio or a book publisher, or it could be a, a consumer brand that maybe doesn't have content about it per se, but it wants to be affiliated with certain types of content, you know, yeah. be it sports or uh, pop culture or things like that. And so we're what we're pr- proposing to them is that you know we have this really proven fun way that people like to engage with content it's highly sticky uh and that we can uh uh plug you we we offer really interesting seamless ways for them to generate kind of as a self serve model so they can generate the games they can populate the content uh mm. and then they can see they get a lot of data from it as well about who's playing and how often and you know are they responding to this type of question that type of question and uh so a lot of that's very fascinating to them to get almost real time feedback 
about you know who's playing this, who's liking it, who 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 wants more of it, you know things like that. Very measurable, isn't it? And so yes. you're you're charging those guys for the infrastructure to be able to basically to to use your infrastructure for for that play. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. And it, so it is that's one of your business models. I notice there's a little mm-hmm. bit of in-game advertising banner ads that you're doing as well. You're te- you're testing right. that out, or is that? Uh... Yeah, we're just more <clears throat> testing it out. Uh, you know, see, we're we're actually about to launch with this new update too. A couple new ad networks yeah. uh, that are doing some innovative things. Uh, one is doing high def videos, uh, so it has a you know it looks really nice and it's got a great CPM. Who's that? Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, as a group called Ad Colony. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. And then we're working with another group called uh, Keep K I I P, uh, that's doing very interesting things as well. Is where they have gone out and uh, secured deals with. Uh, they're doing real world prizes uh, that we tie to virtual rewards. Yeah. So things like you know, if you get the high score, uh, you'll get our little virtual badge and you know a, a place in the leaderboard. But uh, you might also win a you know a free Starbucks coffee yeah. or some kind of little uh, reward that you know you actually get a physical thing for it. Uh, and so it's a it's kind of an, a similar it's an, it's kind of based on an, on an ad model, but they're uh, tying it to these you know location based real rewards. And and uh, so when you when you look at that, is that uh, you're still in that kind of formulation stage of of how you want to make money, um, or or how to make money in this, or is it uh, like you're you're getting revenue right now, which is a, which is a great thing, which is must be yeah, satisfying. It is, you know, that's we we made. You know, Started making revenue with the location-based games because we we would charge. Uh, you could do it for free on your own, but if you wanted, to, we did a fair amount. You know, done a fair amount of larger ones where say they're often sponsored. Like the bar will sponsor it, or a, a community, you know, community group or a newspaper will sponsor it. And you know, we've had them up to about 150 people. Uh, and then we did a, we did a campaign with NASCAR last year. We did uh, some others along the way, but really the. The model we've been building started uh, kicking in uh, about the last two months. Uh, you know, when we started building these channels uh, and working with these brands and publishers on on, on uh, licensing the, the technology to them. Okay, and that makes sense because um, yeah, it allows you to scale a little bit faster than mm-hmm. you know, well maintaining the the cost structure a little bit lower, right? So that uh, sure. Yeah, that's the thing. That's part of our, our interest in, uh, you know, we th- we see the media customers as one vertical that we'll we'll be addressing. Uh, you know, there's five or six verticals I think that that we're seeing some traction in. Yep. But the media one, you know, is, is a great start because one, they're generating content and they're all pretty hungry for new ways to engage people with that content. Yep. Uh, and two, they all have existing audiences, be it your local newspaper up to, uh, you know, CNN. Uh, and so we feel that well, we should be able to get at least a portion of each of those audiences along the way. Uh, and so instead of growing it by fifteen hundred a day, hopefully we can move that to you know fifteen thousand a day or something like that. Yeah. And you think that that's this is the way that you guys are going to be able to do that? Uh, you know, uh, advertising and, and uh, all of those other ways that people do this. Um, it just seems like that's a lot of money being spent on on nothing. But working with the right partners, you're assuming is going to be able to drive that that uh, those numbers up. I, that's what my belief is, yeah. right? You know, one, I think we have uh, an innovative way to engage people with that, and then two, I think there's a lot of stuff that we haven't really tapped into uh, uh, all that much. But with how uh, you can use GPS for uh, for customer acquisition and lead generation, yeah. you know, be it um, a newspaper that wants to build up its readership in a certain neighborhood, up to uh, uh, you know, uh, we've, we're doing some interesting things with. Uh, for-profit uh, test uh, groups, for example, you know, people do standardized test prep, yeah. oh. uh, and, and so you know, special white-label versions for them, where you might take this test because you're thinking about going back to law school, for example, uh, and then we could correlate that and say, oh, okay, well, uh, uh, he, you know, Rodney, you took the the LSAT quiz. There's actually a test center that we have, you know, up the street from you. Here's an offer. Take that up there, and you know we'll give you ten percent off for a free first time class, what have you. Uh, so I think there's a lot of interesting things around that to do that really integrate the the, the user experience with with the um, the benefit that the customer the uh, our customer gets, uh, you know, from the, the the GPS capabilities of the phone. You got to think that uh, that uh, I've got to think that ideas must be coming at you guys fast and furiously, like, and it's got to be a challenge to to kind of put the blinders on and say, listen, we got we got to bear down and focus because it it just seems like a, this whole conversation what we've been talking about is just another idea layer on top of another idea it's layer. It's true, yeah, <laughs> and that is our challenge now, and that we're 
we're trying to execute uh, in, in a focused way, and we're trying to raise a little money. Uh, and there certainly are calls that we get where we say, "This is very interesting, but you know, can we talk again in three months or six months?" Because yeah. uh, we just we're trying to knock down these two or three short-term objectives mm-hmm. first before we start looking at those things. So if you look, if you look back. Rodney, and you, and you think about what what is it, what you've gone over the last year, and and was there, like for, for the for the people who are still listening and watching to this, was there was there a a moment uh, that you you just had an epiphany, you had that aha moment that you knew what you had to do in order to be able to scale, to be able to escalate, uh, to be able to do something that that really mm-hmm. made a, a big impact on what it is that you guys are trying to do um, with Crank. You know, was there? Yeah, yeah. Kind of a, that 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 epiphanal moment. You yeah, know? you know, like yeah. a lot of people struggle with with uh, you know when do I give up? When do mm-hmm. I continue? When do I keep fighting? When do we really think that this uh, you know is this a real business? And and there's right, got to be right. a moment in there that you you say, listen, if we're not here b- yep. by this time, you know, we're mm-hmm. gonna gonna. Oh yeah, and it, it has been. You know, we've certainly had challenges like that where you know Michael and I and and some of the other guys, you know. It's been some late nights and lean months where, you know, we think we know we're doing. We think people like this, but, you know, do they really? I think one of those came uh, probably about November when uh, through LinkedIn, uh, one of our, what's become one of our our first uh, major media clients found us, found Michael, my co-founder. And it was just, it was a a publisher of of a, you know, pretty big international publication. Uh, Found them on LinkedIn and said, hey, you know, we think gamification of the news is a uh, is a, a thing that just hasn't even quite caught on yet. But we yeah. want to be part of it. We like what you're doing. Can we have a talk uh, through LinkedIn? You know, through LinkedIn, you know. And I, you know, I, I suddenly I felt very bad for making fun of LinkedIn over the years. Like, oh my gosh, you know, it was all <laughs> worth it for for this. Uh, and then when the, that was really the first of several we've we've gotten. Uh, and not that you know we're on easy street now by any means, but suddenly we started realizing like, okay, this is not just trivia geeks. Uh, who are like to play this and, and mm-hmm. on their iPhone, but there's actually, you know, there is a real business value here and, and a business, what we believe is a business to business platform. Uh, you know, that, that, you know, if, if they're finding us, then we could certainly with a little more work, you know, go out and find 10 more of them or a hundred more of them yeah. and make that happen. Uh, so that was, I think that was one of the bigger ones, uh, when that happened. Uh, and we, we actually had another cold call like that, that someone just sent in a, a thing to our, uh, uh, our info at you know ricochet address. Yeah. Uh, they just you know again that's been the great thing is people are kind of looking at it and they're extrapolating in their head like what this would happen. We've had a lot of interesting calls of people saying you know we our group spec'd out what we wanted. Uh, we've had a vision for this or we hired a, a group to spec it out for us. And then one of our people came in and showed us crank and said hey it's already out there here it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you know. Either we're really lucky or really smart or or something, but you know that, that those kind of moments have been really uh, uh, encouraging as well. well I, and that, I think that's what has to happen a lot. You know, you have to build. The bottom line is you have to build something that people want to use and want to talk about. And as you said, you've you've created a passionate uh, group of people that use this and are willing to stand up and say there is this technology out there. It does exist. Um, mm-hmm. Or you know, as they're looking for it, you guys are in the right places, leveraging the right social means to be able to be found. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you know that's that's really a, a I think a testament to a good idea or an idea whose time has come. Without mm-hmm. without the way that you guys have executed on the game, the interface, the play, everything like that, um, you 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 haven't constrained people's ideas about what this can be, which mm-hmm. is the coolest thing, because then they sell you on what they're trying to do. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. And it sounds to me like that's what's happening out there. Is that that uh, is definitely what's happening, uh, and it's been awesome. Uh, you know, and we're trying to leverage that for a lot of things. One to improve the product, two to grow the base and the revenue, and then three to, you know, I think it really fortifies our story as we go out and talk to investors and talk to the the VC community. Yeah. Uh, you know, to say, you know, we're not, you know, this is not a, an idea that we hope people will embrace I mean, we have <laughs> we can show you our you know our contact list people who are, we're trying to get back to because we can't keep up with the calls you know that's so that's, good. that's it's a good position to be in yeah. so how do people so obviously uh crank uh so crank the game k-r-a-n-k the game.com right uh, q q r a n k oh sorry yeah cr- yeah q i'm looking at a i'm looking at a q and calling it a k <laughs> uh crank yeah. the game k- q r a n k 
thegame.com is where they can find information. There's some videos and uh, information up there. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. look for it in uh, in App Store. It's available on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, we we have a web version now. That's uh, it's it's one of these channels. Uh, so the cha- uh, it's on the uh, it's for a particular brand or a particular group called Texas Tribune, but we'll be launching more of those. Yeah. Uh, and then we have an Android version coming out in March. That's good. Uh, of, yeah. of 2010 of this year. So is that are you launching that at South by Southwest or is that? We, uh... we hope to. Uh, it's part of its interesting deal where it's it's a, a bundled application with Samsung phones. That's where it starts coming out. Great. Uh, so we hope it's out in time for that. So uh, you're on board. You're bundling it with like you're uh, you're on deck, so to speak, with the uh, with the Samsung phones. Yes. Uh huh. Well, wow, that's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Know, I know that. Uh, um, I saw a scavenger was uh, onboarded with uh, some of the Sony phones, or actually some of the Nokia phones. Um, mm-hmm. Just out of curiosity, how did that come about? Did they did they come to you, yeah. or did you approach them? Well, it was a third party, uh, 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 NGMoco. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which they announced this last week at at the Mobile World Congress yeah. uh, or conference. Uh, they they approached us. We we had some interesting talks with NG over the many months that we've been doing Crank, trying to find a way to work together. Uh, and so they're launching this new platform, uh, and uh, they invited us to be one of the launch partners for that. That's great. Yeah, those, yeah. Are, the, those are the little things that uh, that start to add up, you know. Uh, so. Yeah, that, that is, I guess, when you're talking about lessons learned and things, I mean, that's been a big one is how many, uh, you know, I spend a lot of my time, uh, I'm the only non-programmer on our team, so I try to keep the guys focused on programming, and I spend a lot of time, you know, with sales and biz dev and fundraising and yeah. project management but it is amazing how many you know uh conversations from the past that you thought maybe weren't going anywhere or were one-offs or dead ends often kind of spring back into focus and realize like oh there's actually an opportunity there or that opened the door with this other person i didn't even realize was interested and uh so it's 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 a fascinating process the way it works. Yeah, there's never there's never a closed door here because uh, if you're doing something on the forefront, when people catch up to it and they see what's going on, um, mm-hmm. they'll remember you. And and uh, so don't burn any bridges, but try every path. I guess is the lesson here. Oh, and, that's and, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, listen, uh, Rodney, I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, it's it's been yeah. great. Uh, you know, I wish you all the best and the company all the best, and and I look forward to seeing what comes out of you guys in March and beyond. Great. Um, and uh, head over to the website, uh, qrankthegame.com. It's called Crank, but uh, I'm spelling it out, Q-Rank. <laughs> spelling it out, Q-Rank, right. Uh, and then uh, go to the – it's available on, uh, on in, in the App Store for iOS and on Facebook, obviously, on the web. Look for it in Android in, in March, and, uh, you know, I wish you guys all the best. Well, thanks so much. really appreciate it. All thank right. you. So uh, thank you. Uh, we've been speaking with Rodney Gibbs, who is the uh, co-founder of uh, Ricochet Labs, the maker of Crank. And I really appreciate you guys watching and listening to this wherever you are. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rob.